Today I'm going to show you how you can take your Node-RED instance to the next level. We're going to be installing Node-RED on a separate Raspberry Pi which I've got right here and then we'll be connecting it up to Home Assistant without using Home Assistant's add-on. Some will prefer the simplicity of the add-on but others want the full control and flexibility of having it running on a separate instance. If you have a spare Raspberry Pi then let's give this a go and let's roll the intro. All of the links that I'm going to be using in this video, you'll find them in the blog post, which is linked in the description of this video over here. First thing we're going to need to do is get an SD card, plug it into your computer, and we're going to need to flash it, and we're going to need to flash it with an operating system. So if you go to the Raspberry Pi website, you'll be able to download the Raspberry Pi installer, like you can see over here. We can choose the OS. So I'm going to be using the Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit, I'm going to click on that. Now on your storage, click on that choose storage and find the actual one that you mounted. So for me, it's a 32 gig SD card, click on that. Before you do click right, you're gonna have a, uh, you want your contents to be erased, so you're gonna lose all of your contents. I'm gonna say yes, kicked off and it started writing it. This process should take maybe a couple of minutes at maximum. Now it's going to the verify phase, give that a few seconds. So we've got this message, it says that the card reader has been uh, successfully written. Now we need to enable SSH, so SSH is what we're going to be using to connect to the Raspberry Pi to send a few commands. Now, if it ejected it automatically, just take it out, put it back in. I've got boot here, and over here we need to create a file, and the file is called SSH. So open up your text editor, uh, I'm using Atom. File is called SSH, no extension, nothing. Just create that under the uh, boot. That's gonna allow us to connect to it and go into the terminal, okay? because by default it's turned off for security reasons. But it's gonna be super simple and all of the instructions are gonna be in the blog which you can just copy and paste it what I'm using here. So now get your Raspberry Pi, get your SD card and insert it into the slot. My one's just over here and you're gonna need some power and obviously a internet connection and ethernet jack will be ideal. So once it's booted up, we need to find the IP address. To do that, go into your router configuration in there, you should see a list of devices. So I'm using Unified Network, as you've seen probably in a separate video. Go to clients, I can see all of my clients. I've ordered this by uptime, so I can see what one has just gone to, up to the network. And I have uh, an IP address, 192.168.1.81. In my example, your one will be different. And what I did also, I went over here and I went to the uh, configuration tab, the network tab, and I put the IP address and you can see I'm using a fixed IP address. But let's say for example, I wanted to change this to 82. I could just do that and I, when, next time the Pi reboots, then it will pick up a new IP address. Now I'm using Mac, so I'm gonna be using Terminal, but if you're using Windows, you can use DOS or you can use any SSH client that you want to use, for example, Putty. So we're in the Terminal and the command that we're gonna need is SSH space Pi and then at, and then here we're gonna put the IP address that we are using. So it's 192.168.1.82, and press enter. Now it's gonna ask us this question, uh, just go and say yes. Password, the default password is Raspberry for this uh, Raspberry Pi OS. Obviously go and change that once uh, you've set this all up. So now we're into the Raspberry Pi. You can see that from that green, the green part over here, it says Pi at Raspberry Pi. So we connected to the Pi and now we can start sending some commands. And what we're going to basically do now is install Node-RED onto the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so copy the bash command. You'll see it over here. This is the bash command. And it's basically going to go and install everything. You just need to copy it, paste it in, press enter and just say, put in a yes, so with a Y, lowercase y. It's asking us, do you want to sp install specific Pi nodes? I'm gonna say no, because I don't want to install and inflate the system and just go to install what we actually need. So it says here it could take up to 20, 30 minutes depending on your Raspberry Pi, over a three or four. Other thing to note is that Node-RED installs uh, Node.js, which is a compulsory requirement 
but this does it all for you. So once this is done, we will be then able to start Node-RED and actually access it. So that took a few minutes. We've got like completed now and we could immediately start Node-RED. So let's do that right now. Afterwards, we're gonna actually uh, add it in as a service. So what happens is next time that the Pi boots, we don't actually need to go into SSH or do anything. So we could just plug it in put it in our cabinet or wherever and just leave it there and we don't need to touch it anymore. But for now, we just get a kick off Node-RED. Now, I could use a simple Node-RED and start that that way, but because of the uh, space limitation with uh, the Raspberry Pi, we want, to, we want it to free up memory more frequently than default because Node-RED can be installed on Windows machines or anything really. So a lot of this will apply, whatever we're doing afterwards will apply to any machine. This is going to be specific for the Raspberry Pi that I'm using. So you can see a few things. It gives us the version numbers. It's starting up the flow. And here it's saying that the server is now running at uh, 127.0.0.1. That is actually called local host. But because my machine here isn't the local host, then we're going to need to replace that with the IP address that we used to connect into the terminal. I hope that's making sense. The port is 1880 and that's like the default port. You could change that, but I would not. Just leave it as it is. Go to your browser that you normally use and type in 192.68, in my example, .1.82 and then put in the port 1880. And now we can see it loaded up node red and we have our node red instance. Now I'm going to start connecting Node-RED and Home Assistant together. Now if you're using the add-on this will be done automatically for you but if you're not using the add-on and you're using this method to so installing it separately you're going to need to follow this step. Go to the menu, click on manage palette, go to install. Here we're going to have to search for a few modules. The modules that uh, you need are again linked in the blog post. So you can just copy and paste them in. So the Node-RED Home Assistant WebSocket is what you're going to need. Click install and go again and click install. Then that is done. If you scroll down in the palette, we can see Home Assistant and this will be quite familiar to you if you already use Node-RED. But over here, basically we could do things like call services, check the current state, uh, entities and, and all sorts of things so we can build our flows. And this is very much just exactly the same thing as using the add-on. There's one more thing we need to do. We need to now connect the two together. So we need to actually tell Node-RED where is Home Assistant. To do that, we need to go into Home Assistant. Go to your actual username. If you scroll right at the bottom, you're going to find something called the long-lived access token. So we need to create a token. So go click on create token. Give your token a name. So I'm gonna call it Node-RED YouTube. And as soon as you click OK, you're going to see a text. That text, you're, going to, you're only going to see it once. So you're going to have to copy and paste it, put it maybe on a notepad, just in case you lose it. And then you're going to, we're going to need to put it in the node red, okay? So I'm going to generate it. I've got the token, which I'm going to uh, delete anyway uh, after this video has been recorded. So I'm going to leave it as it is. Now I've got the token. Remember, don't share your to token, uh, or if you do, you can just delete it and regenerate it again. So I've got node red and in a previous video I made some flows and you can see I have flows already here. Now you don't want to rebuild all of your flows. This is a crucial step, right? You gotta pay attention now. What we can do is we can export these and then re-import them. So let's assume we want to migrate flow one. Go to the menu and go to export, click on JSON and just Go copy to clipboard and go to your new uh, Node-RED instance. Go to the same menu. This time we're going to put in import and we're going to paste in that uh, beautiful JSON code and we're going to click import. So we've got an error message that says that the stop time hasn't been recognized. As you can see, it's got this unknown over here. So now it's the actual time to go back to manage palette, go to install and search for the stop timer you'll find that linked again in the blog. You can just search for it, it's the first one, click install, and let's wait a few seconds once that's installed. Now that error message should go away, and you can see it's become green. So that's all good. If we were to enable this flow by clicking over here and going and uh, I'm taking that disabled, clicking done. Now we can deploy this. So if we click on deploy, we've got this deployed. Now, even if we've deployed it, it's still not working. So we're gonna to need to put the token in. 
So clicking on uh, motion, for example, or any, any tab, you've got this server here and it says Home Assistant. Now I'm going to edit this, I'm going to put, it, put the pencil in and it actually says I use the Home Assistant add-on. I'm not using the Home Assistant add-on, so I'm going to need to untick that. And at this point, you just need to put the URL and the access token. So go and get your URL of your Home Assistant, which in my example, it's 192.168.1.225. So put that in there. That's done. Now put in your token, click on update and click on done, 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 deploy. And now what we can do briefly is just check that everything is working. So we should have only one Home Assistant and it should be with your correct token and with your URL. So all of this should be working fine. Now, if you add something new, for example, uh, current state, and you double click on it, you can see Home Assistant has been already configured. So that's all, all working. To test this out quickly, I'm gonna try and turn this uh, bookcase off so you can actually see it. So I'm gonna pull in an inject. I'm gonna go down at the bottom and let's get a call service. Change this to bookcase off. The bookcase is running on a switch. So we get a switch dot turn off and the entity uh, ID is the switch bookcase smart plug. The auto sensing, uh, you can see it's working here. If it's not working for you out of the box, Try to deploy something first. If that doesn't work, potentially reboot the Pi once you've connected Home Assistant together. So click on done. Let's connect this together. I'm gonna to deploy this, confirm deploy. And I'm ready to inject it by using this checkbox. And the light went off. So, sorry, the switch went off. So it's changing it back to on. Go to done, deploy, confirm deploy. I'm gonna inject it again and it's all turning back on. Now, if you got value out of this video, remember to like this video. And if you want to actually know what the differences are, I'll be researching and trying to find out how much performance having a separate Pi is compared to the add-on, what are the pros and cons, I'm gonna delve into more detail. And you let me know your opinion. Subscribe to the channel when new Node-RED videos drop. There's actually one more command that I need to show you, the sudo system enable for the Node-RED service. So if you copy that in and paste that in, again, link in the blog, uh, just do something like that. And you can see that it's actually done it. Now I'm gonna leave you with my Home Assistant versus Node-RED video where you can actually see an automation, a real practical example, and see the difference between the two. There's a little bit of a speed test at the end of that video. Uh, I enjoy that pretty much, and more of those videos are gonna come in the future. So I'm gonna put them up here on the screen. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you're staying all safe. This is Gio from Smart Home Makers. Peace.